Okay, so thanks for the introduction. Uh, I'm gonna be talking still about uh, best time identification, but this time in the fixed budget setting, and I'm gonna present a new uh, tight lower bound for that. This is joint work with my advisor, Alexandra Carpentier. So as we have already seen, this is a variant of the Milton Bennett form where we don't care about exploitation, but simply we want to make a recommendation at the end of the game. So we have a bandit setting, we have capital K arms with distributions, and they are characterized by a certain mean mu k. At each time step t, my uh, game is that I have to choose an arm and I receive a sample from this arm, iid. So best arm identification, as you're already familiar with, uh, our goal is to find k star, the arg max of these means. Uh, there are two different settings. The first one that we've talked about just now is the fixed confidence setting, it's a stopping time problem. And the one that I'm gonna be concerned with is called fixed budget and it's a resource allocation problem. And I have a constrained, constrained budget or horizon capital T. And at the end of the game, I have to return an arm uh, with the smallest probability of error possible. So I have to design good algorithms for that. So in the fixed budget best arm identification problem, I will assume that I have a single best arm K star with mean mu star. Um, and what characterizes an algorithm is simply that I have an allocation rule that tells me what arm to sample next based on what I've already done and what I've already seen. And I have a recommendation rule, um, K hat uh, capital T, that tells me what arm at the end of the game to recommend as the best arm. And my objective is to find algorithms that minimize this probability of error under the samples collected by my algorithm. So some important quantities uh, in this problem, uh, I will call uh, the gap uh, delta k, simply the difference between the mean of the best arm and the mean of my arm k. Uh, and I will call h the complexity of the problem, the sum of the gaps to the power minus two for all suboptimal arms. And clearly this is somehow a measure of the complexity of the problem because as the arms get closer to the best one, my complexity becomes bigger. There is also a second quantity that I call h2 that comes up a lot in the fixed uh, budget literature. Uh, and it's uh, the quantity uh, defined uh, as follows, assuming my arms are out of, that maximizes uh, this k times uh, delta k to the power minus two. And somehow h2 is a good proxy for h uh, because I have this inequality here. Uh, so h2 smaller than h smaller than log k h2 up to a constant. Uh, and this inequality can be tight on both sides depending on the prompt that I'm facing. So what are the current bonds in both settings? So for delta small enough, what we can see is that the lower bond and the upper bond in a fixed confidence problem for the first order term uh, are somehow matching and the community has moved on to much more refined analysis and algorithms. But in the fixed budget setting, there is somehow a gap between the lower bond and the upper bond. Um, and it's related to the quantities that I introduced before between H2, H and this log K factor. Uh, so a simple intuition that was uh, in the community before was that somehow it could be possible to invert the fixed confidence upper bound by setting so this delta to my probability of R for the fixed budget problem and that there could maybe be an algorithm that matches this exponential minus t of our h rate. Uh, of course, um, sorry? Yeah, there are constants kind of everywhere. I didn't put them. Is that okay? Um, and uh, of course this reasoning is flawed because uh, the goal of my talk is to show that one cannot uh, avoid this log k adaptation price that I put in red here in the table. Okay, so what's the idea for lower bonds uh, uh, in general and for uh, bandit problems for pure exploration? Well, we want to restrict ourselves to a smaller class of firms, say a finite class of firms, and we make strong assumptions on the shape of the distributions. Of course I need to do that because if I just consider sub Gaussian arms, I could have zero noise. And if I just explore the arms once, I'm not gonna have a lower bound for that. So the idea is that we feed all this extra information to any algorithm and we show that it still makes mistakes even though it knows uh, much more precisely the environment it is uh, facing. So in my talk, I will restrict myself to a class of distributions that are Bernoulli distributions with mean in uh, this uh, interval, but our results can be really easily extended to Gaussian distributions of a known variance or Bernoulli in a different interval. So what are the previous constructions? Well, the first construction was in a paper by Odibert, uh, Bubeck, and Munoz. Uh, and what they did is that uh, uh, they showed that if you fix the, the different means of the arms, but then you permute the arms, uh, you construct a class of firm with k-factor uh, different problems. 
and they all have the same complexity H. And what they show is that um, for any such form uh, and any algorithm, there exists a such permutation such that we make an R with probability at least of order exponential minus T of our H2. Now the problem is that somehow this class of forms is slightly uh, limited and too restrictive because if I fix the means, then I fix the best mean. And there are actually algorithms that can uh, take advantage uh, of knowing mu star and they can actually achieve exponential minus T of our H. So the best that we could hope for is that if we improve uh, uh, on this construction, we can maybe uh, get the exponential minus T of our H, but we're never gonna get the log K factor. So the idea here is that we're gonna restrict ourselves to K problems, but this time with varying complexities and different uh, best means. So a really nice construction that was in uh, Kaufman uh, recently is a flipping construction. So again, I fix my arms, uh, the means, and I, I assume that they are ordered again, and I call that problem one. And then in problem I, what do I do? I flip arm I with respect to I'm one, and then I have defined k different problems. So as you can see, uh, for example, the last one I put an arrow, it means that this is now the best arm and all the other arms are unchanged. So a single arm is changed. And what I do when I do that is simply I create problems that are easier because somehow the best arm is uh, farther away and we can have uh, easily that the complexity hi is smaller than h1. And what they show in their paper is that for any algorithm, there exists a problem in this class of forms such that we are with exponen uh, exponential minus T of our H rate. Uh, so when you see that, you have two possibilities. Either you try to find algorithms that can match this exponential minus T of our H, and that's what I try to do because I'm kind of optimistic. But unfortunately, uh, I became somehow convinced that we cannot do that. And so what we did is that we took uh, this construction and we somehow made a more refined analysis and we gave even more information to the algorithm. So we, we restricted the environment to uh, this arithmetic progression uh, that you can see here. Um, and um, what happens is that the hardest problem as before is still problem one, um, but the easiest problem is really easy now because if I flip the last arm and I put it in uh, three quarter, then all the other arms are bonded away from this arm. And so what's going on is that complexity uh, H1 for the, e the hardest problem scales with K to the power two, and for problem capital K, the easiest problem, I have complexity that scales with K. So somehow I have created a rich enough class of problems that I can do a more refined analysis with. Okay, and what happens is that for any bandit algorithm, there exists a problem among just these K problems that I have defined that are really restrictive, such that, um, the algorithm will have an error of order exponential minus T of our log K H I. So somehow we have improved the bound and we have code this log K in the bound. So a simple corollary is that we cannot have an algorithm that without extra information can match this exponential minus T of our H rate. Um, and so it means that we need to find a better algorithm. Okay, so the take home message is that we have a new lower bound of order exponential minus T of our log KH. Uh, okay, but remember one of the first things I said is that we have H2 smaller than H smaller than log KH2. So somehow it looks like maybe there could be a contradiction because if I take log KH2, it's smaller than log KH and now the lower bound is bigger than the upper bound. But there is actually no contradiction. The only thing that happens is that we have H2 of order H and the bounds are now matching for these problems. So now con some food for thought, consider instead of parametrization with alpha like that. Uh, so before I had alpha equal one, and what we show is that somehow there are harder problems in which the log k appears. There are easier problems in which we have exponential minus t of our h, and we have no reason to think that the, the, the lower bound should be improved. Um, and so this calls for uh, an interesting problem, which is can we adapt somehow to easier problems? 